Hello and welcome my beautiful pumpkins. Today again we will be reviewing restaurant designs and oh boy they are pretty but are they functional and we're gonna see that again today. My name is Laura and I'm a food and beverage and hospitality expert. For the past 13 years I have been working with hotel and restaurants all around the world. I have over 11 openings under my belt both for individual boutique hotels, individual restaurants and small restaurant chains. I have been working with uh, designers, investors, architects, uh, or restaurant operators or pretty much anyone that has cared to open or improve the functionality and the profitability of their uh, restaurant design. So today we're going to be reviewing um, some more restaurants and we're going to see how would I improve their design and how would I make it more functional and make sure that it can earn this money, honey. Let's get into it. So today we are reviewing um, Amanda Hamilton's interior design of a most interesting restaurant. Let's see how interesting it actually is. Ha. You can always see when a professional designer has done some stuff. So the client really had a vision of having a central U-shaped bar. And one of the challenges when you put a bar in the middle of a space or a kitchen is that it's not generally the most efficient use of space. But what we loved about it in this space is it created this heart in the space. Okay. Uh, I absolutely agree with Amanda. Um, let's just go back. But um, I really like the fact that she did uh, design a space um, according to uh, the desires of the clients um, uh, and to have like a, a bar as a central uh, feature of a restaurant. And I absolutely agree with her. It is super uh, difficult and super space consuming to put a such a large bar in a place. Um, and we see over and over again um, you know, designers or architects doing this very, very large bars. Um, and then in practice, you can never have them full. So then you have wasted a lot of space and yet people don't want to sit there. Um, this is especially true when you're not serving food at the bar um, and uh, you're only serving drinks. And if your bar menu is a little um, lacking, uh, it is very, very difficult to um, have basically the bar filled up. Uh, this looks very, very nice, very cozy. One problem that I see over and over again uh, with bars and bar chairs is that very often they're aesthetically very, very pleasing, but uh, not very comfortable. These chairs look comfortable. So good job, Amanda. I completely agree with you. It is tough, but it seems like you did a good job. Not generally the most efficient use of space, but what we loved about it in this space is it created this heart in the space. I'm Amanda Hamilton and I am the CEO and founder of Amanda Hamilton Interior Design. Hi, we Amanda. are sitting in Kama Restaurant, which is located in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And we are beautiful. right in the heart of the inner Look city in a neighborhood called the Beltline, which also borders another really vibrant neighborhood called Victoria Park. Lots of restaurants around here. See, when you are locating your establishment in a district with a lot of other restaurants, it is very important uh, that you think of how your establishment can really stand out. Um, and that could be done through, of course, the overall concept, uh, but it could also be done very much by uh, the design uh, of both the interior and the exterior. So don't underestimate how much design can help your concept stand out to customers, especially when you are in a busy uh, restaurant and food and beverage area. One of the things that you'll see when you first enter the restaurant is a series of arches. I always love repetition in a space. If you do one arch, it needs to be like a really big arch. It needs to be a feature. I completely But agree. when you do repetition of anything, repetition of artwork, repetition of a design detail, it just creates a very strong impact. In addition, they're obviously very popular right now. 
I completely agree with uh, uh, Amanda and it seems like her style is uh, very kind of uh, uh, there are a lot of influences in the style and the design and definitely the arc element kind of ties it up together now too so it's this combination of trying to make a space that feels very very relevant but that is still um, speaking to you know these these places that have been designed years and years and years ago one of the things that I completely agree with Amanda um, on, on, on this. You definitely want your design to be very relevant and very uh, modern or contemporary, but also there are some just good practice. Uh, so you don't have to reinvent, uh, reinvent the wheel uh, per se. There are a few things that, um, that are just good practices and you just have to adhere to them. So if you are designing a restaurant uh, or working on improving your own restaurant layout and design, uh, just research um, some of the uh, kind of uh, successful places and just see what are the um, underlying repeated uh, kind of, you know, uh, features of them and see how you can incorporate this. Of course, if you would, um, if uh, you would like to reconstruct uh, your place, you can also hire a consultant uh, like myself and uh, just um, see a professional to help you with your uh, redesign. I think about when you're creating a space that's leaning on both sort of, you know, antiquated things from the past and then merging that with modern is that you really want to mix materials and you also want to make things really I really like the floor. I like the tiling of the floor. This floor seems really, really nice and easy to maintain and clean. It's also a good color. Um, I like it. It doesn't take away from the design. I also like the little uh, foot rack. Uh, I believe this is uh, for the bar. Again, the metal part underneath makes it very easy to clean and people could put their feet here as well as they can put their feet at the bar chair. So very good design decisions. Well done, Amanda interesting one of the things that we love to do is really layer materials so as an example there's not just one wood tone throughout the space we have a warmer wood on the table and then here at the top right um, and we could see this just at the uh, previous shot as well but you can see like these tiny waiter stations where what I can see uh, there's some stuff that probably the staff is using and they're super small and subtle because this space is very narrow so very very clever use of space very nice we have a blonder wood on the chairs um, that would be one example we also love to mix metals however in this space we did a lot of brass and so there's little touches of that in the lights there's touch brass is a good but not the best choice uh for uh, things like this because over time you do need to polish it to really make it clean and stand out so my suggestion would be uh, stainless uh, steel. Again, uh, color considerations, um, you know, it has, to, it has to match, but I prefer stainless than brass. Touches of that around the bar. And then we came up with this like really cool light fixture above the bar, which Very again, nice. kind of speaks to that old world charm with the brass and the tassels, but it's done in a really contemporary way. I guess brass is uh, I always love putting plants thing. in space. It breathes a lot of light into space. We like real plants. There's just something. I like the fact that they have combined natural light coming into the restaurant with artificial lighting. Again, we see this again and again, and I don't understand why people just don't do it. It is so simple and so easy uh, is to add some kind of lighting uh, on the tables very very often if you don't have uh, enough uh, headlight uh, the table and what you're eating and drinking can become a little bit dark uh, and out of my experience this definitely takes away from the dining experience uh, because it's nice to be able to see uh, you know your food and drinks in general but again very easy to add just some candle holders or some kind of light emitting bodies uh, at the tables will definitely solve this about them that makes you feel like you're transported um, and then the other thing that that we really really loved in here the details that we loved is the bank cats the bank cats have like bank hats I like this <laughs> some call it booth some call it bank hats um, yes 
uh, uh, banquettes or a booth uh, is a very, very good option uh, for utilizing walls and setting up a lot of small tables. It is a very great way of utilizing space in a very elegant uh, and very flexible way. Um, it is elegant because it always makes this long line that is beautiful to look at and beautiful to um, uh, kind of see. Uh, it makes nice lines visually um, and also if you uh, put smaller tables that also gives you a lot of flexibility to change your floor plan depending on are you having more uh, couples and more two tops also called two tops uh, or are you having more parties of four six or a large party you just put the tables together and it's still very aesthetically pleasing like mixes of leather and vinyl and different patterns, you can different colors, can mix interesting details on the back of them with screen details, um, little leg details that make them interesting. You want the person that's sitting down to dine, not just to be looking at the entire room, but also... One thing I would like to say about booths, uh, it is also very important to get the height and the slope of the back uh, right, uh, because again, you don't want to be sitting on a booth and feels like the you're a kid and the table is up to uh, your chest. This looks a little bit like this, uh, but again, I can't really tell from the height uh, of the, you know, the booth itself. Maybe it's just a shot, um, but make sure that it's, 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 it's right. Make sure that the um, booth or, or the, the banquet back is not too upright um, or it's not too laid back. And again, um, very, very uh, important uh, to consider the seating height in comparison to the chairs and the table. So, you know, they're looking at their table, they're looking at the, the materials next to them. You want them to experience that in a really micro level, especially since that's, that's where they spend most of their time when they're actually in a restaurant. When selecting the lighting, we like to think about it alongside the furniture. We look at lighting like art. Right? They really are these really beautiful sculptural pieces that help define. I agree. It is very important when you're considering light for a restaurant uh, is to consider roughly where would you be locating uh, the furniture or meaning the dining tables. Again, if you are building a restaurant layout uh, that is more flexible or you desire it to be more flexible, um, then you do have to spread your lighting um, evenly throughout a dining area. But you, if you will have a very uh, set um, floor plan and you will never move it, um, then yes, uh, you can definitely think of light fixtures that focus on a particular uh, furniture piece or on a particular table. I personally uh, like uh, flexibility. Um, therefore, I would probably opt in for something that is more individually distributed. Of course, multiple light sources are always better, especially if they're adjustable. Then you can adjust the ambience and make it always cozy and uh, kind of very um, uh, comfortable and pleasant with dim and soft lighting. Um, and again, you can always um, kind of uh, add to this with some small light fixtures on the table. In a room, so not only are they functional, um, but they're also this aesthetic piece that add, add a lot. I to like the, room. the fact that the light. So is when we're very thinking soft. about lighting, we want to think about wall sconces. We want to think about down lights, up lights, general lighting, and so there is a lot of different types of lighting in here. Of course, I have mentioned the bar. We love the tasseled lights above the bar. That was really intended to ground the space. That's the nice thing about dropping lighting from the ceiling, is you're creating a delineation. So again. You this is a such a nice way of creating softness and texture into the wall with light. I love this. You can do that with walls, you can do that with furniture, but you can also do that with lighting. So you'll notice above the banquettes and some of the seating areas that we've run linear, you know, pendants that are sort of, again, there's that repetition that's coming up that creates a much stronger you know, design intent than say a few pendants hung here and there. Um, and then there's these really beautiful kind of artful sconces throughout the room, which really throw a beautiful light, but then also help to add to your... Um, I really like the openness of the kitchen. This is something that uh, definitely adds to the coziness. Um, and I love when open kitchens are made like this, like a little niche into the wall or basically it's just a, a, 
hole in the wall but I like it when it's done like this because it feels like a window and you're looking through that window into the kitchen and seeing how um, you know the staff is working um, and that can be very very nice and also when it's done like this it's not too much into your face it's not exactly the kitchen placed inside of the dining area the way the bar is in this particular place and it's a very very nice way also the lighting of it is very nice and cozy and still yet um, strong enough for the staff to work and to see what they're working on very well done you're not just like filling the walls with like meaningless art. Um, I also like uh, the little nooks and niche uh, here for uh, plates um, and for little uh, perhaps napkins, perhaps cutlery. Very, very nice. Very good idea. Very good utilization of space. Uh, so yes, you can definitely, uh, when you're designing something, consider building in some nooks like this uh, for the service staff. You always need space uh, in a restaurant. And again, uh, doing these kind of clever uh, space utilizations will be very, very helpful for your staff. Art, they really are the art on the walls. And they also highlight some of the architecture in the space. So our design process always is started with the design discovery meeting where we spend two or three hours really getting to know our client. We want to understand what keeps them up at night, um, what's going to lead to successful project before we even start talking about design. And, it, and it's always this like marry between the form and function as well. We want to talk about how a space is going to function. I always sort of say that anyone can design a beautiful space like any designer can do that, but not everyone can, de can design a beautiful space that's both functional and Beautiful. Amen, Amanda. Um, and Amen. also that is going to have legs and is going to be enduring, is going to live in a community and create a little bit of a legacy project. So we start there in the design process. And once we have all of that shape, that's when we come back to the client and we present a concept to them. We really want them to sort of understand that we were listening, this is what we heard, and this is what we want to sort of put forward as the concept. If that all goes well, that's when we dig into design. That's when we really start thinking about those details. Like, how do we look, for example, um, to a Moroccan market? And how do we pull color from that market that feels really authentic? So that every single piece in the restaurant does have a story behind it. There is, um, you know, there's intention behind it. There's a thoughtfulness. We're not just designing a beautiful space. We really are trying to be reflective of that original concept. We call that concept the North Star, so that throughout the process, which can sometimes take six to nine months, you know, from start to finish of the design, that we can always go back to that original design intent. One of the interesting things in this space as well is that the chef previously had another restaurant and had a collection of a few pieces of furniture, some neons and some other, you know, artifacts like lighting. You can definitely see a design, um, you can definitely see when the person that is opening the restaurant is not a first time restaurateur. Um, and when they work with designers that know what they're doing, you really, really you can really see the result and this is great. And we were able to incorporate it into the space. So it's a little bit of a nod to his previous restaurant, which was Workshop, which I always love. And again, it's a story. See, um, here what I want to point out is this um, uh, wine kind of rack display uh, place. And this is really, really great to be used both as a display and a partitioning in a restaurant. It still creates a lot of flow uh, and a lot of air in it. Uh, and it's not just a, a kind of uh, like a full wall. It's a very, very nice uh, way of both kind of displaying your product, uh, but also creating a little separation in the dining area piece and it's also a piece I think for him that makes him feel like he's still at home you know so it, you kind of carry on the legacy of, of former projects in a new space and I think that's something that we've done here quite seamlessly and you you wouldn't know that these pieces were were in another restaurant previously okay good job Amanda um this was uh, probably, no probably, so far this has been the best restaurant I have reviewed. It was really, really great. I like um, the way they designed the space. It 
it looked very cozy, very functional. I definitely like some of the uh, uh, functionality of the pieces. I like how they, their use of booths. Uh, I like the, how they did uh, the bar um, and definitely doing a bar as a centerpiece is very, very tough. So good job, Amanda. Um, and yeah, I think this is really, really well done. You can definitely see that the people that build it are not first time entrepreneurs, um, that the designers also have had a lot of the uh, functionality and operational efficiency in mind when building uh, the space. And it's not just beautiful, but it looks very, very nice to dine in and uh, also it looks like it's uh, convenient enough to operate from what we could see in the video. I hope you find this video interesting as per usual. If you do, please give the channel some love, like and subscribe. And if you have any comments uh, or any questions, you can always leave them in a the comment below. Or if you would like to chat in private with me, you can always send me an email with your questions, restaurant floor plans uh, to review or restaurant design videos you want my opinion on. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.